What a charming party! Yeah, it's great to see everyone enjoying themselves. Ah, but you know, didn't we hear that after supper we'd get a few stories? Tales told round the table. Oh yeah, sure. Hello, let's have the after supper stories. I've already toasted with eggnog, and two nibbled on a candy can, and three... Oh, I forgot one thing. What's that? I've got this perfectly good piece of mistletoe back in a sec. Hello, folks. We're not having a full-on news broadcast today because the crew's having a nice dinner and then everyone's heading out after the winter storm breaks to catch planes and trains and so forth. But in the meantime... Okay, we're ready. Ready for what? Some cookies and malsado, and after that, uh, well, I guess we know on some drumsticks and stuffing. But the best part, we can open our Christmas crackles. It's so exciting. But stories first. Hello. We did a coin toss, and the first one to tell a story by the fireplace is you. Well, I can't think of any offhand. Hmm. Maybe, uh, let's just see. I got this book of short stories for a long train ride. Maybe there's something in it. Okay, so let's see. Ah, okay. One dollar and eighty-seven cents. That was all. And sixty cents of it was in pennies. That's a story. It sounds like a accountant giving a lecture. Well, it probably gets better. Hmm. Ah bien, okay. Please continue. Pennies, pennies. Oh, okay. Pennies saved one and two at a time by bulldozing the grocer and the vegetable man and the butcher until one's cheeks burned with the silent imputation of parsimony that such close dealing implied. Three times Della counted it. One dollar and eighty-seven cents. And tomorrow would be Christmas. Oh, okay, maybe now it's getting a little suspenseful. What will she do? Well, I guess we'll find out. Right faster, I want to find out what happens. Okay, so the girl... Della? Oh, Della, right. She's counting her change. Okay, back to the book. There was clearly nothing to do but flop down on the shabby little couch and howl. So Della did it, which instigates the moral reflection that life is made up of sobs, sniffles, and smiles, with sniffles predominating. Well, that's very philosophical and true. While the mistress of the home is gradually subsiding from the first stage to the second, take a look at the home. A furnished flat at $8 per week. It did not exactly beg her description, but it certainly had that word on the lookout for the mendicancy squad. Della finished her cry and attended to her cheeks with a powder rag. She stood by the window and looked out dully at a gray cat walking a gray fence in a gray backyard. Tomorrow would be Christmas Day, and she only had $1.87 with which to buy Jim a present. She'd been saving every penny she could for months with this result. $20 a week doesn't go far. Expenses had been greater than she'd calculated. They always are. Only a dollar and eighty-seven cents to buy a present for Jim. Her Jim. Many a happy hour she'd spent planning for something nice for him. Something nice. Something fine and rare and sterling. Something just a little bit near to being worthy of the honor of being owned by Jim. You're rare and sterling, comrade. Oh, well, thanks, Marcel. I appreciate that. And I'm glad you do, because I totally forgot your present in a taxi cab on the way over here. Well, that's fine. Only joking, but that's exactly what I mean, huh? But tell us the rest of the story. There was a pier glass in the room. She whirled from the window and stood before the glass. Her eyes were shining brilliantly, but her face had lost all of its color. But what happened? Did she see something scary come down the chimney? Was she fat? Are there elves? Is this going to be science fiction or an adventure story? Jack, a friend, I like you, but read faster. What happens to Della? Oh, it's fine, Marcel. I just had to turn the page. Rapidly, she pulled down her hair and let it fall to its full length. Now, there were two possessions in which they both took a mighty pride. One was Jim's gold watch that had been his father's and his grandfather's. The other was Della's hair. Had the Queen of Sheba lived in the flat across the air shaft, Della would have let her hair hang out the window some day to dry, just to depreciate Her Majesty's jewels and gifts. Had King Solomon been the janitor with all his treasures piled up in the basement, Jim would have pulled out his watch every time he passed, just to see him pluck his beard from envy. So now Della's beautiful hair fell about her rippling and shining like a cascade of brown waters. Once she faltered for a minute and stood still while a tear or two splashed on the worn carpet. On went her old jacket. On went her old hat. With a whirl of skirts and the brilliant sparkles still in her eyes, she fluttered out the door and down the stairs to the street. Where she stopped, the sign read, Madame Sophroni, hair goods of all kinds. One flight up, Della ran and collected herself, panting. Will you buy my hair? asked Della. I buy hair, said Madame. Take your hat off and let's have a sight at the looks of it. Down rippled the brown cascade. 
Twenty dollars, said Madam, lifting the mass with a practiced hand. Give it to me quick, said Della. Oh, and the next two hours tripped by on rosy wings. She was ransacking the stores for Jim's present. She found it at last. It was a platinum fob chain, simple and chaste in design, properly proclaiming its value by substance alone, as all good things should do. It was even worthy of the watch. As soon as she saw it, she knew it must belong to Jim. It was like him. Twenty-one dollars they took from her for it, and she hurried home with the eighty-seven cents. She sold her hair? Yes, for the money to buy Jim's present. They can use her hair to make a wig. Bon, Jack, but you know, I don't know what I would even get if I sold my hair to buy a watch chain. Not even twenty dollars. I don't even know what they would do with it. Maybe they could make little fake mustaches for babies. Do you want to hear the story or not? Of course. I was just too wondering. When Della reached home, her intoxication gave way a little to prudence and reason. She went to work, repairing the ravages made by generosity added to love. Which is always a tremendous task, dear friends. A mammoth task. She looked at her reflection in the mirror long, carefully, and critically. If Jim doesn't kill me, she said to herself. But oh, what could I do with a dollar and eighty-seven cents? At seven o'clock, the coffee was made. Jim was never late. The door opened and Jim came in. He needed a new overcoat and he was without gloves. As soon as he saw Della, he stopped, as immovable as a setter at the scent of quail. His eyes were fixed upon Della and there was an expression in them that she couldn't read. It wasn't surprise nor any of the sentiments that she'd been prepared for. He simply stared at her fixedly with that peculiar expression on his face. Oh, what happened to Jim? Did he step on a tack? I imagine he was just a little taken aback. Jim, darling, she cried, don't look at me that way. I had my hair cut off and sold because I couldn't have lived through Christmas without giving you a present. I just had to do it. My hair grows awfully fast. Say Merry Christmas, Jim, and let's be happy. You don't know what a nice, what a beautiful, nice gift I've got for you. You've cut off your hair? Cut it off and sold it, said Della. Don't you like me just as well, anyhow? I'm me without my hair, aren't I? Jim looked around the room curiously. You say your hair is... is gone? He said, almost with an air of idiocy. You needn't look for it, said Della. It's sold, I tell you. Sold and gone, too. It's Christmas Eve, said Della. Be good to me, for it went for you. Maybe the hairs of my head were numbered, she went on with sudden serious sweetness. But nobody could ever count my love for you. Shall we put the chops on, Jim? Out of his trance, Jim seemed quickly to wake. He unfolded his Della. For ten seconds, let us regard with discreet scrutiny some inconsequential object in the other direction. Eight dollars a week or a million a year. What's the difference? Well, actually... Yeah? Oh, uh, never mind. A mathematician or a wit would give you the wrong answer. The Magi brought valuable gifts, but this was not among them. This dark assertion will be illuminated later on. What's up? Oh, nothing, nothing. I was just caught up in a drama. Jim drew a package from his overcoat pocket and put it on the table. Don't make any mistake about me, Dell, he said. I don't think there's anything in the way of a haircut or a shave or a shampoo that could make me like my girl any less. But if you'll unwrap that package, you may see why you had me going for a while at first. White fingers and nimble tore at the string and paper. And then an ecstatic scream of joy. And then, alas, a quick change to tears and wails, necessitating the immediate employment of all the comforting powers Jim had at his disposal. For there lay the combs, the set of combs that Della had worshipped long in a Broadway window. Beautiful combs they were, with jeweled rims. Beautiful combs, exactly the shades to wear in the beautiful vanished hair. They were expensive combs, she knew, and her heart had craved and yearned over them, without the least hope of possession. And now they were hers. But the tresses that should have been held by the beautiful combs were gone. But she hugged them to her bosom, and at length she was able to look up with dim eyes and a smile and say, my hair grows so fast, Jim. And then Della leaped up like a little singed cat and cried, Oh, oh! Jim had not yet seen his beautiful present. Isn't it a dandy, Jim? I hunted all over town to find it. You'll have to look at the time a hundred times a day now. Give me your watch. I want to see how it looks on it. Jim tumbled down on the couch and smiled. He smiled? But what is he smiling about? C'est quoi ça? Oh, isn't it terrible? The combs, the hair, the combs, the hair. The combs. Oh, it's heartbreaking. But why do you tell us this horrible sad story for the party? C'est quoi ça? Well, it's not a sad story per se. I beg to differ. Ah, but we haven't reached the ending yet. Hmm. Ah, bien. Fair enough. But what happens? Hmm? Mistletoe? No, no. Not right now. I want to find out what happens to Dada and Jim. Let's see. Where were we? The combs. Ah, okay. Del, said he. 
Let's put our Christmas presents away and keep them a while. They're too nice to use just at present. I sold the watch to get the money to buy your combs. And now suppose we put the chops on. Oh, oh la la. The Magi, as you know, were wise people, wonderfully wise, who brought gifts to the babe in the manger. They invented the art of giving Christmas presents. Being wise, their gifts were no doubt wise ones, possibly bearing the privilege of exchange in case of duplication. And here I have lamely related to you the uneventful chronicle of two foolish children in a flat, who, most unwisely, sacrificed for each other the greatest treasures of their house. But, in a last word to the wise of these days, let it be said that of all who give gifts, these two were the wisest. Of all who give and receive gifts, such as they are wisest. Everywhere they are wisest. They are the magi. And so there we are. That's how it ends. <coughs> Excuse me. Marcel? Oh, c'est pas grave. I think, uh, I think maybe I just uh, poked myself accidentally with some mistletoe. Yes, yes. It looks like my crew accidentally poked themselves with some mistletoe also. Uh, pardon me. Does anyone have a tissue? Hey, Jack. We opened our Christmas crackers while you were starting the story. I have a hat. And voila, you see. But somehow we ran out of the Christmas crackers. What a disaster. I didn't get anything? Well, no, but, uh... That's okay. Hey, old friend. You can have my hat. And I have the real present for you. It's under the tree with everyone else's presents. This is a real present, Marcel. Ah uh, bien, look, old friend. I wish you wouldn't say things like that. Why not? Well, we're running out of tissues. <clears throat> Excuse me. Kleenex for everyone. Ho, ho, ho. Thanks to everyone for visiting and following our mad adventures this year. Happy holidays or regular days to all. Merry Christmas, Jack. And Merry Christmas to all. Merry Christmas, Marcel. I'm a tree. And to all, a good night. <laughs>